Well, the puzzle that is the NBL 1 National Finals is complete. The final pieces came together at the weekend as we had our final champions crowned. Hello and welcome to the NBL 1 show. Thanks to Coles Express. I'm Megan Hustray with Pete Hooley at the desk for the final time. And Pete, it is a huge congratulations to the Bearcats, the Panthers, the Hawks, the Chargers, the Senators and the Flames our newest NBL One Conference champion. Well, you said it. The puzzle is complete. So excited. We are three days away from getting our first national finals on both the men's and the women's side finalists, champions. And it's going to be really exciting. Some big matchups coming. Big games over the weekend, which is what we expected. But all road has led to here. And the, the funny thing is, some teams have had more rest than others. Is that yeah. going to benefit them? Others are going to have a bit of celebration. Is it a little bit of hangover? Because... For so long, it was, OK, I win my state, whatever I'm playing, and that's a great celebration. We enjoy it as long as possible. A lot of people who maybe work during the season will go back to work. But now you're coming over to Victoria or if you're in Victoria for like teams like the Ringwood Hawks and Frankston, you get to play at home. It, it's yeah. super exciting. And, yeah, anything could happen. We could see... People might think they know who's going to win, but when you're playing across the course of a couple of days, anything can happen. And so interesting because we look at our North champions who won in series two weeks ago mm. and then we've got um, teams that won in standalone grand finals as recently as the weekend so so much to play out tell us a bit about how it is going to play out because the national finals is your jam Pete you've been waiting for this all well, for a couple of years really oh uh, yeah so we're finally here How's it going to work this weekend at the State Basketball? Well, I must say, I've actually been waiting for this since probably 2007 because I was growing up playing in the Adelaide League would exchange names about five times. There was the opportunity to come over and just play the Victorian winners a couple of times way back in the day, and then it just went away. So I'm really excited this is back, but it is different. So the system is very is the exact same as the NBL Cup was and the NBL Blitz will be. So three points will be awarded if you win a game, extra point for each quarter one, and if you tie the quarter you get to split the points so that means you'll be playing two games and that way the top leading point score so everything matters and yeah. I'm really excited about that because you can't take your foot off the pedal every single quarter matters if you're losing a couple but you win the game it, it, it's anybody so it's going to be really high quality basketball for the entire 40 minutes which is what I'm excited about yeah it's going to be epic state basketball center here in Melbourne of course let's have a look at the draw starting on Friday a massive weekend of hoops coming up as we have a look at the bracket now so in the women's action on Friday West Adelaide Bearcats take on the Senators the Townsville Flames play the Spartans and the Bandits play the Hawks in the men's Pete, it's the Flames and the Panthers, the Chargers and the Rollers and the Frankston Blues, the wild card winners against the Gunners. Well, that's going to be the Friday, which is jam-packed full of some elite matchups that we just can't wait to see. On Saturday, as you saw there on the graphic, the first place team will face fifth, second, fourth and third will play sixth. And then on Sunday, the two highest scoring teams will face off in the championship game, while third and fourth will play off for third and fifth and sixth will play off for fifth. So get all your tickets uh, by Intex at nbl1.com.au or the NBL One app. And I think maybe I'll, I'll start lodging a little petition that I like that we're doing a different kind of scoring. I think it's unique, mm -hmm. but there could be a chance to have a little Elam ending opportunity for the national oh. finals. So that's something that it's going, it's getting bigger. I think the G League's using it this year in some games, but maybe that's something we can look at for the future, being the full national finals, like an Elam ending kind of situation. And you think this, the um, scoring system is unique, Unique Thompson, who's just behind you there, and we'll see her on the weekend. We will. We'll be seeing her play against one of our key guests that I'm looking Coming forward to up. having a chat to. Yeah, so the national final this weekend at the State Basketball Centre. We're going to take a look at the games, and we're also going to see how we got here for Central West and South champions at the weekend. Let's start with the women and we're going to look at the Bearcats and the Senators. That is at 6pm, the first game of the national final. Huge weekend. The Bearcats, they are stacked. They are led by Jasmine Fijos. 18 points per game alongside finals MVP Madeline Newty. She had 25 points and 17 rebounds against Sturt. And she's going to be very dangerous against the Senators. Yeah, some big personal matchups here. The Senators, they're just as deadly. Conference MVP Stacey Barr, they will be for a tough matchup with the Bearcats. Uh, 
watch out for uh, Leonie Fabic uh, as well. 21 points and 10 rebounds is the finals MVP in the West Grand Final. That's just a nice little appetiser to start the That's night. That's a very nice way to get things underway. And then we turn focus to the Southern District Spartans and the Townsville Flames. So we've got a wild card and the North Women's Champions. It is the rematch of the NBL One North semi-finals. We take a look at some of that action. Now that's at 6.15 p.m. local time. The Spartans come into this game looking to exact revenge after losing that semi, but they'll get the second chance as the wild card series winner and Townsville are hot, hot, hot. Well, they are. I mean, they beat Logan 2-0 in the grand final series a couple of weeks ago. And not just beat them, obliterated the undefeated team, which they'll be having a lot of confidence with. Steph Reed, Courtney Woods will be ready to fire. No Alana Smith. Yep. Now, that is a big change. So they're becoming confident. And we spoke to Steph Reed, who said it's tough to beat a team uh, multiple times in a row, especially when you're playing them in the same season. So, no Alana Smith changes things, but I'm sure they're going to be ready to fire. I think... Pun intended, by the way. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to do that. Totally. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Uh, she's a huge loss, but I don't think it's going to hurt them. Ooh. And with Shannon Seabom at the helm, but also... They, they don't have to do a scout on a team from another state. Are we, are we going to do this at the end? Are you going to have your prediction? Yeah, sure. OK, we'll do that at the end. Townsville for me. Okay. I'm on them. OK, we'll do it now. <laughs> no, I'll do mine. <laughs> All right, time. let's move through now to our next game. This is a big one too. Albury Wodonga Bandits and the Ringwood Hawks. Ringwood coming off a championship win at this very venue uh, less than seven days earlier. Um, this game's at 6.30 on Friday, Pete. Yeah, this one's going to be really exciting, the Ringwood Hawks. They've been unbelievable all season long. They play for each other. They have fun out there. They're going to have the advantage of the home crowd and it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of excitement. In this one, the Bandit Star Finals MVP, Unique Thompson, she's going to go up against Finals MVP, Marina Whittle, who had 33-19 and 19 against the Braves on Saturday. But there's one question mark around this game, and it's no surprise. The GOAT, LJ. We're not sure whether she's going to play yet or if she doesn't play. But if she comes down and suits up on the Friday, well, that changes things mm. a lot. Um, the GOAT and the Opals are in camp this week on the Gold Coast with uh, just over two weeks to go into That's the exciting. Women's World Cup in Sydney. Now, I think with both teams, we've talked about their stars. Um, we've got three of them behind you on the set and we'll talk to Marina Whittle shortly. But there are so many great cogs in those teams that have got them both to championships. So my prediction for this one is that it, it might be some of the unsung heroes that play the roles and not necessarily the names that we bandy around every week. Well, so. you're going you're gonna to pick Townsville to win it all. I'm going to go with Ringwood Hawks. I think, that, I mean, the home crowd's going to help, but just watching the way they went about business over Bendigo on the weekend, I think Ringwood have what it takes to go all the way. Yes, I like that prediction from you as we move on to the men's action now. And we've got Rockingham Flames taking on the Panthers. No Devondrick Walker for the newly crowned West men's champs. Yeah, it hurts them, no doubt about it, in the national final. But a big congrats to him. We had him on the show earlier this season. He is now signed with the Brisbane Bullets, which is well-deserved, 100% deserves that NBL chance again. Uh, but they're going to face off against the South Adelaide Panthers, who we spoke to Alex Starling, the finals MVP, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And he said they, they lost and they to Woodville. They wanted revenge, had to get through Daniel Johnson and the Forest Hill Eagles. They did that, and then they went and beat Woodville, got the revenge... Starling was enormous. Jeremy Smith was the conference MVP. This is going to be a really tough match for the Flames. We've had an outstanding season. They've got the old heads who go about their business. They've got Marshall Nelson, who we'll speak to later. But the South Adelaide Panthers, they're well coached. They've got a little bit of chip on their shoulder, and so they should. They're going to be a really tough beat this weekend. Congratulations to the Flames and their coach, Ryan Patrick. I love this story. Um, coached in WA State League and then NBL won for a long time. Head coach of the Perth Lynx in the WNBL. I think he's still getting over that um, grand final mm. series defeat to the Boomers. But what an amazing year that is from him. We know that Perth started the season in January. They started late. They relocated to Ballarat, got them to a grand final series. No turnaround and then has won a NBL One West Men's um, Championship. I think that's a remarkable basketball story. You speak to anyone who's been coached by him and they have nothing but positive things yes. to say. And we, we, for the last few weeks, talk for so highly of Shannon Seabone, but Ryan Petrick as well. Yeah. He's just an absolute star in what he does. And they, he's going to have to be ready to roll yeah. this weekend. No Devondrick Walker. You take out the MVP and the best player on your team. It's going to shake things up. But more opportunity for some other guys as well.
OK, let's take a look at this next game. It's the Hobart Chargers fresh from the South men's grand final victory taking on the Rollers. Uh, there are a few absentees in this game. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but it's, we know it's the NBL preseason, big important time for NBL teams when they've got a lot of new roster changes to try and get things sorted out. So it looks like we're going to have no Sam McDaniel, no Harry Froling, no Bearstow for the Chargers, no Kiddy, Krebs or Mitchell, uh, who'll be away for bullet stuff. So that, it's a real big setback, no doubt about it, but it still leaves some really high-quality players. I mean, Lamar Patterson is still running around for the Gold Coast Rollers. Expect him to have a really big weekend this weekend. So Oh, this could go either way. This could be a real big coin flip, but it's going to be a battle. There's still some young stars ready to shine. Ole Angustine has been a standout for Hobart all season. A fantastic import. Did some big things for them in the grand final at the weekend. And AJ Harris, he didn't have the... the Grand final he probably wanted to at the weekend, but it didn't matter because he came out of it a championship player. So um, he's averaging 14 points and five assists a game. Angus Dean um, was perfect from the floor and had 11 points against the Pioneers. Want to quickly talk about Sam McDaniel. I know he won't be there this weekend, but he was just... Mm. How sensational was he in that grand final at the weekend? We know they, they struggled a bit in the first quarter and they went to um, a two-pass zone in the second term. And it proved to be a masterstroke by Anthony Stewart. And he had no one better than Sam McDaniel to execute it. Oh, he was terrific. And again, playing with a lot of confidence the NBL one season. This is what it's for. It's for those players who want the opportunity to get signed, like Devondrick Walker did. Sam McDaniel to gain a lot of confidence going into a big year for the Jack Jumper. So well deserved to him. I'm expecting AJ Harris to have a big game yeah. in this one. I, I'm talking maybe a 30-piece nugget. Same yeah. with Lamar Patterson. I yeah. think he's going to have a, a big game as well for this one. Oh. Um, but I'm waiting to hear your tip on who you think is going to win it all on the men's side but mine's going to come from this next game believe it or not yeah i reckon i'm with you on that one too oh let's have a listen on, Pete. have a listen she's copying me i'm going to go out and say <laughs> i'm a copycat from ballarat we're literally. talking about the frankston blues versus the canberra gunners the frankston blues the wild card winners they'll face off against the nbl one east champions the canberra gunners in the final game of the night starting at 8 30. Frankston, hometown crowd, and I feel uh, this might be a little biased for me to be saying, but the Gunners are going to have their fans. We know they behind them. We spoke to their finals MVP last weekend, and I think they're going to be a really tough beat. But Frankston, when you talk about players, the NBL players who aren't playing this weekend, yeah. Frankston have a really, really, really strong squad. They're, they're playing good at the right, playing great basketball at the right time. I think they're going to be really hard to beat this weekend. Give me some Frankston names you're looking for. Dylan Stife, Lockie Barker should be back from injury. Daniel Trist is around there. Uh, Adro Bra uh, Bailey as well. Um, Iggy Hazimerovic, uh, Lucas Barker. So And Lucas Barker, Golden Hands winner. Congratulations to him, NBL 1 South. So they are absolutely loaded with talent. So they don't lose anybody this weekend but, uh, if they can be fully healthy. And I'm expecting them to be peaking at the right time. So we're both going to go for Frankston in the men's. Oh, we're not going for them, we're tipping them. I'm going to tip I'm going to tip Frankston versus South Adelaide in the grand Ooh. final. I think South Adelaide are going to be really strong to beat as well. Yeah. And I, I, if we get that, I'm really excited at some point to see the Alex Starling versus Dylan Stife matchup. Oh. I think that's going to be... It's just so great to see different conferences and these elite uh, imports go against yeah. each other. So I'll be penciling in to watch that one. So good. Let's reflect on the NBL 1 South Women's Grand Final because it was an epic at the weekend. Ringwood taking the chocolates over the Bendigo Braves 89-73. to Marina Whittle, she was absolutely sensational. Finals MVP, 33 points, 19 boards to go alongside that. Um, we've got to talk about the imports as well. We'll ask Marina about them, but the uh, the woman known as Diggy, Digna Stratmane, was a two-way weapon with 16 points and preliminary finals hero Marta Hamida had 19 points and eight assists. They were sensational. I just love the crowd were great. They just supported those two girls so much. And I, I just love the imports and the influence they have when they come in, not only on the court, but they just become fan favourites. And, and it looks like this has been a team all season long that just enjoy playing with yep. each other. They have a lot of success and it showed on the floor. I mean, Bendigo have been a really tough beat all season long when they were at full strength. Tess Magid had 30 points. Um, Meg McKay, she was outstanding, had 23 and 17. But the Hawks are going to play Albury in the first round. And as we said, there could be a bit of a question mark around the goat. So, again, huge congratulations to Ringwood. That's why I think they could a chance to go all the way this weekend. Yeah. The way they went about business on the weekend, how fun it looked, they enjoyed themselves. I think they're going to ride a big wave of momentum. Well, the finals MVP joins us now from the Ringwood Hawks. Her name is Marina Whittle and she had the crowd chanting MVP at the <laughs> weekend. Welcome, Marina, and congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. Um, 
Yeah, it's still kind of hitting me what's happened over the weekend, but very happy to be here. So the crowd was just unreal. The atmosphere was fantastic. <laughs> the whole game, you were turning to them and getting them to um, get behind you in the second half. Describe to us what the atmosphere was like. Oh, it was such an amazing experience. And I'm so thankful that we had the crowd that we did. Like you said, I remember looking over into the crowd and just lifting my arms up and trying to get them going. And they, every time I did it, they fully came back and they just supported the heck out of us. And it was just awesome. Like having the crowd behind us was really the make or break up. Now, we're having a look at some of the highlights here. And one thing that stood out for me with your team all year long, really, was the enjoyment of success of every single player. That's like a true team. No surprise that you've managed to have the success you have. Every single person on the bench gets up for any little moment. What has it been like to be part of this outfit? Oh, like you said, it's just been such a team environment all year. It's been anyone's night on any given day. And I think being able to celebrate each other and each other's success has been like a credit to our team and our chemistry. Everyone's been awesome and it's been a pleasure to be a part of. Well, two players that have been awesome for you are the Euro duo in Marta and Diggy. Could you, <laughs> our Euros. <laughs> your Euros. Could you have asked for two better imports? They have been fantastic all year. And again, they played huge roles in the grand final win. Oh, absolutely. They've been massive for us like there was one season oh there's one game sorry where Mark had got 17 assists in a triple double and the ability to share the ball like that coming from an import is I haven't seen it before whilst I've been playing and then Diggy I don't know if everyone knows this and I've been streaming it for all year but she's from Latvia she can do weird crazy things on the court <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about your personal journey. The last 12 months for you has been unreal. We know that you've been part of some big teams, some big moments, but probably playing some of the best basketball of your career. What has been the secret to it? You look like you're having a lot of fun out there and you're just straight up balling. Yeah, well, like you said, I'm having a lot of fun out there and Tim Motten and the Ringwood Hawks have been so supportive of my success uh, and my growth, I feel. And... There's been a lot of coaches and a lot of support system behind the success. Um, Damon Lowry, obviously, with 3x3. Jay Bewa, 3x3. Um, Nat Hurst, Chris Lucas. And then, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm in a really good spot going into the WNBL this preseason. And I'm really excited for what I'm going to do. Let's talk a bit more about Tim Motten because... If anyone deserves a championship, it's a man like that that's been at Ringwood forever. Um, I had the pleasure of sitting behind him when I was doing sideline on the weekend and he was turning around having a little chat and drinking his hot chocolate in his thermos. He's such a character, but he bleeds green and black. Um, how much does it mean to be able to win a championship for a person like that? Oh, Timmy's amazing and he's absolutely loved us. And he comes from such a positive supportive place and to be able to win this for him knowing that he's really tried to bring Ringwood through to NBL one and he's tried to bring success every year and he's been a great coach on coach of the year two three years ago now I, it's just awesome and I know that he loved it like he didn't even really want to celebrate with us because he was just so happy and he, he couldn't stop smiling after the game. It was amazing. He came out at half time actually, um, and was grabbing something out of his bag. And I was, I was thinking, you know, what, what's going on here? Is it a scout for the second half? He <laughs> had little bags of lollies to give his granddaughters who were at the game. So I love that he was focused on leading his Ringwood girls to the championship. A few red frogs. But a few little lollies, some snakes, and strawberry and creams for the grandchildren. What a man! Our yeah. straps. Well, that's, that's, that's a pretty well put yeah. together bag, by the way. We're going to have to talk about some lollies and stuff later on. But you mentioned the word celebrating. Now, there's a national final coming this weekend, which you'd have to think that you're pretty confident that there's a good chance you can go all the way and become national champion. So with the celebrating, did you have to tone it down a little bit and say, hey, we've still got a job to do? Or did you say, look, we'll give us 24 hours and then we'll lock back into what's coming this weekend? Yeah, definitely. I think... Um Far out. We trained last night because we play on Friday and having at least the weekend to acknowledge and appreciate all of our hard work and success uh, is very short-lived, but it was very, it was lived to our fullest. So really happy with the celebration, really happy with what we did, but yeah, still work to be done. And we're pretty excited. We were talking last night how, you know, we could be the first team to make 
history and win the first nationals and first NBL one nationals. And that's something that now that we've got the NBL one South championship, which is an amazing journey in itself, being able to step into this next weekend and come away with something extra special that would just top it off. And be how, awesome. how big can your home crowd be this weekend? Because as we touched on at the start, they were magnificent on Saturday night, but if you can get them back and their signs and their big voices and maybe even some neutral supporters getting behind Ringwood. Can that play a big part? Oh, I think we play basketball for the fans. So as many people that can come out and experience it and enjoy it would be the best. Obviously, we want everyone to get there. Some neutral supporters would be great. Coming from Victoria, we would be remiss if we don't have the biggest crowd there but if everyone can just get down and watch some incredible basketball this stuff doesn't happen every day this is massive we've got teams from WA teams from Queensland South Australia New South Wales this stuff doesn't happen not even in the WNBL or NBL one uh, NBL season so people can get down and watch some amazing basketball being hap uh, happening at State Centre people just got to take advantage of this basketball's here baby I'm with you. I mean, there's our social clip right there. Everybody get okay. down and make sure you watch some high-quality basketball. We, before we let you go, now, you mentioned supporters. There's probably none bigger than your partner. Now, Annalie Mayer, she was there. She was screaming. She was enjoying everything. It's been an incredible 12 months for both of you. She, we spoke to her recently, and she's very outgoing to how proud she is of your journey. Talk to me a little bit about what you've seen from her over her last 12 months, because it's an incredible thing what she's going on, part of the World Cup, her growth. How do you feel about what she's managing to do? Oh, I have absolutely love being on the sideline watching her. It's just been awesome. I've seen her journey during COVID. She just puts in the work. Like, she's just such a workhorse. I've never seen anybody work as hard as she does. And I'm so happy that she's finally reaping the rewards. It's been a long time coming since she came home from college. And uh, it's just been awesome. Like, I was a bit cut that I wasn't able to get over to Chicago and it was very short-lived, but... I've been telling her next season's her season and we're just going to go straight to the WNBA and just put her there. And the World Cup's going to be great for her. And I'm just, ah, it's just been awesome to witness. She's just done so great. I'm so proud of her. Well, good things, good people for both of you. The last 12 months for both of you has been fantastic. You deserve all that you've earned. Marina, congrats on a huge weekend, but good luck for a huge weekend coming up. May it go the distance. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. And like I said before, get down to State Centre. It's going to be an amazing weekend with lots of basketball being played by some quality basketball players. So everyone, get a ticket, come watch, scream it on, scream it on KO, scream it if you're at home as well. <laughs> Love that. Thank you so much. Good luck and we'll see you this weekend. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Let's take a look at the NBL One South men's champions now. They are the Hobart Chargers and they did it in style against the Mount Gambia Pioneers. Well, they did. I mean, a really, really good win because the Pioneers, we spoke about playing the best basketball of the season. They started really well, hit a rough patch, bounced back uh, towards the end of the season. As you mentioned, Sam McDaniel, he was the finals MVP. He was excellent, 32 points and six rebounds. Jared Bairstow had a double-double. AJ Harris, we mentioned, he struggled. Harry Froling, only two of 11. But in and the huge end... Huge on the boards. Huge Harry. on the boards. They just got it done. They got it done by committee, obviously led by Sam McDaniel. Uh, big shout-out to Mount Gambia overall. Again, just a terrific season from them. Nick Marshall had 25 points, nine rebounds. He is set for a massive career. He is super oh, fun to watch. So good to watch. Pioneers co-star, Perth Wildcats development player Michael Harris... Uh, he only had 13 points, but it was an exciting grand final. Big congrats to Hobart. Uh, they continue to, to win uh, NBL One South uh, grand finals. They've, they've won a couple now in the last few years. Wasn't it amazing how they were able um, to go to zone and just change the game? It's Anthony Stewart. Stewie knows what he's doing oh, he down sure there. He sure does. And it was great to, um, to chat to him post-game. And um, they had a big viewing party back in Hobart, which was great. And this is the great part about having our league on KO freebies and, and on the app for people to watch because, you know, it was two interstate teams at the State Basketball Centre, but they were still able to watch on. Pioneers had a huge turnout 
of fans and their women's team were all there supporting the men. So I love that all program approach. That's, I mean, that's what the pioneers have done again. I want to give a special shout out for them for the, where they've come. Yep. Shout out Matt Sutton on the women's oh. side as well. He, he's a terrific bloke, but really another is. up and coming coach who has yep. big things in store for him. Uh, since rebranding that women's program, having to bring them part of it where they've got to this season long. So uh, all positive things yes. down in Mount Gambia. Coach of the year too. In well the deserved. Women's, which Very was well awesome deserved. to see. Yeah. Let's move to Central action now where two champions were crowned. We'll start with the women and it was the Marty Bearcats coming out on top against the Sabres 82 to 75 on Saturday. There they are. Watching this game, I tell you what, the Sabres, they had plenty of chances down the stretch to get the job done. They just missed a couple of shots, missed a couple of passes down the stretch and the Bearcats were just too strong. Sabres came back from a 20 point lead at half time. It's a 17 0 run from the Bearcats during the first half. Uh, Matty Ute, as we spoke about, had 25 and 17. She was named the finals MVP. Michaela Williams from Sturt, outstanding season 23 and 13. Tried to do everything to get Sturt over the line. Again, great to see an awesome crowd there. Um, I saw on Jenny Rintala's Instagram, and shout out to Jenny who's been doing the fly in, fly mm. out to play for the FIFO. Bats. Yeah, FIFO. Um, and they did a, an awesome photo of just everyone on court at the end of the game, and that's what it's all about. Oh, so something in Adelaide, mate. Yeah. We're, it's just, it's, you guys. We're just, we're just breeding well, don't we? Well, let's talk about the Panthers now because they did it well at the weekend, beating the Warriors 88 to 58 to be crowned men's champs. Kind of touched on it already, but this is the revenge they wanted. They wanted the opportunity to play Woodville after losing two weeks ago when we spoke to Alex Starling and they absolutely put the sword to the Warriors. Uh, MVP, uh, they w Woodville put all their effort into Jeremy Smith, but they let Alex Starling do what he has done so well for many years. He had 31 points and 18 rebounds. Rightly deserved finals MVP. We asked him did he have a little chip on his shoulder for not being named in the All-Star 5, which was probably a bit stiff not to get that. And he said no. He said he got bigger things on his mind. And he did that. Not only did they win the championship, he got the finals MVP as well. And I don't think he's done yet. I think he's no. going to come over here this weekend. I think he's going to have a massive weekend alongside Jeremy Smith. And South Adelaide might be pretty oh, tough to beat. Some of these inter... Well, they're not interstate. We're saying interstate because we're based in doing the show out of Melbourne. But some of these guns that are coming from conferences to Melbourne, uh, they are coming with a point to prove and the biggest fish to fry in the national finals. So Panthers play Rockingham this weekend in the national finals as we head West, speaking of Rocky, but we'll talk about the Senators first because they are champions after defeating Williston Tigers 87-61. No surprise. Conference MVP Stacey Barr went to work when it mattered. One of our favourites of the show. She had 23, 9 and 6 and a really, really big win. Another one, though, 87, that's 61. That's a massive win, so well celebrated by them. And we spoke a little bit about the, uh, other teams who could really give it a shake this weekend. There's no reason why they can't come over here and feel really confident about being the inaugural a national champion. For the Tigers, Taylor Hepburn top scored with 16 points and five rebounds. Just want to shout out Desiree Cowley, the captain of the Tigers. We saw her speech on socials over the weekend. Very classy stuff, just like her team. So congrats to the Tigers on a great season as we move on to the men's champs now. And it is the Rocking Hand Flame. Oh, I mean, really, as any game, one by 12 uh, in that NBA One West Men's Championship against the Buccaneers. They've been favoured all season along the Buccaneers, but we knew that if the Flames could get all the players on the floor that had so many things to deal with throughout the entire season that they were going to be tough to beat. They came out in the fourth quarter, Rockingham, and did what they do best. Our scored 25-9 to nine in that fourth quarter. Who else? Conference MVP, Devondrick Walker. He was finals MVP, had 26 and four steals. And unfortunately, we're not going to see him this week. It's a real shame, obviously, but it's a big, big congratulations to him because we spoke a little bit about how he came on the show. He wanted to have that opportunity uh, to get back to the NBL. Signed as that last import spot for the Brisbane Bullets. So and good. gets to play alongside Tyler Johnson, Aaron Baines, Nathan Sobey, and Jason Kiddie. Just to say, name a few, Harry Froling will be up there as well. So... This is what the NBL one does. It gives up-and-coming players a chance. It gives players who want to get back another opportunity and couldn't be more well-deserving. Well, of course, we'd love to see him playing in the national finals this weekend. But for the Flames, it's just another week because they've had these ins and outs, haven't they, all season. It hasn't mattered because they've won the championship. So for Ryan Petrick and his team, 
It's just another week. Well, they'd definitely be my tip to win it all if Devontae Walker was playing. Uh, as we said, if they were at full strength, they're always going to be tough to beat, as proven in the grand final. Um, but I'm still expecting them to give it a good shake. Marshall Nelson is someone who's going to come over here with a bit of swagger about him, have a lot of fun. Uh, looking forward to having a chat with him now. Well, we love our next guest so much. We've got him on twice this season, and we don't do that for just anyone, but we do it for Marshall Nelson as he joins us now from WA. Good morning and congratulations on the weekend. Cool, thank you. It's good, happy to be here. Tell us a bit about your championship. It was a cracking game. How good was it to come away with the chip? Yeah, yeah, it was really good. It was, um, it was a... There are times it didn't feel like we were going to get the win, but uh, but yeah, we got there in the end. We started off a bit shaky, but uh, we definitely closed the game out well, so it was good. Now, you've been on a, a little celebration as well. Well, I'm sure the celebrations yeah. were fun. <laughs> uh, we He's spoke... still at the stadium. He, I'm sure he puts in the work. He does a lot of work there, uh, not pl playing as well. He does some coaching as well. But talk to us a little bit about the celebrations. It's a long season. There's a lot of games for to finally be crowned uh, NBL One West champions. Did you have a good crack with the boys? Yeah, definitely. We went back to the um, we went back to the club room and had some drinks there and stuff like that with all the sponsors. But yeah, it was a fun night. You've had an incredible season, as we know, in NBL One, but you've also gone overseas and played there too. Describe to us your 2022. Um, yeah, it was good, a bit unexpected. So um, I got a call like a few months ago saying that the Belgian national team was interested in me and that they wanted me to come uh, do the. World Cup qualifier preparation. So I went over there like in the mid-season and then was there for what, four or five weeks or something like that. So, yeah, it was a great experience and it was good to be back and, and win a chip with the boys. So Now, recently we spoke to the superstar on your team, Devondrick Walker, uh, a bit about the season and the interruptions you've had to deal with as a team with guys coming in and out. We know Greg Heyer went away to the comm game, so you've had to deal with different roster changes. At that time, we were talking to him about how you were going to go away other players would have to step up. He gets a much-deserved contract in the NBA with the Brisbane Bullets, so not going to be available this weekend. What are you expecting from the rest of your team to be able to step up? You've done it all year long. You've handled adversity. Can you do it again? Yeah, I think so, for sure. We've got a really good team, like, you know, from 1 to 10 sort of thing. Like, we have a lot of guys on the bench. I'd be starting other places. So, yeah, I think we'll be fine without him. Obviously, it helps to have him, but I think we might be all right without him to see. You've got a really he obviously is a huge part of the offense and, and plays great defense as well. So we're going we're gonna to miss him, but I think we've got players that can, uh, that can fill the void. You've got a really good team, as we know. You've got a really good coach in Ryan Petrick. We were just talking about his incredible year leading Perth Lynx into a WNBL Grand Final Series. Wasn't able to win that, but he's got the championship with you guys. Tell us why he's such a good coach. Um, I think the thing that stands out, Ryan, is that he doesn't treat anyone different. Like, I feel like he's going to call out the best player. He's going to call the same as he'll call out the worst player. And I think, like, that's probably the one of the things that, that coaches find the hardest, and that would be the hardest part of the coach because you you got to hold everyone to the same standard. I think he does a good job of that, and his X's and O's and the way that he, like, gets his point across and, and how cutthroat he is when he does it, I think is the reason why he's so good is because it's so black and white and, and what he wants and what he doesn't want. So... And he lets you play. Like, he doesn't... I don't think he said anything to me all year about any of my BS step-back shots that I've shot all year. But, um, yeah, he just lets people play and lets people make mistakes. And, and, yeah, and I think that's why he just... A lot of freedom and a lot of uh, a lot of rules, but a lot of freedom. As well. Well, so he does a good job of that. Well, I'm glad that he lets you play the way you play because you play an exciting brand of basketball and a bit of swagger <laughs> about you. But talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on the NBL one overall because it, you've had your opportunity last year. We saw you running around at, in Cairns, but it really is a legitimate pathway for people who want to get their chance in the NBL at whatever moment. It could be one year, it could be a year off, then back into it. We just saw it with Devondrick Walker, high-quality import, chose to go to NBL One West to, to back himself, to play well and then get another opportunity. The NBL One is an off-season league to the NBL. It's become that legitimate pathway for players to, to use to springboard their careers. Yeah, I think it's only going to get better as well. Like right now, it's just been rebranded to NBL One. And obviously, like as time goes on and as it's the, it gets more traction in media and stuff like that to it, then I think that it's going to be more of a pathway like than it was you know, a few years ago. But, um, but yeah, there's, there's a bunch of great players in there and there's people that have definitely fell through the cracks. I think that there probably needs to be a few more NBL teams for the amount of talent that's around the league. But, um, but yeah, like I think it's definitely a good pathway for, for a lot of Australians.
So you've got the Panthers first up in the national finals here in Melbourne this weekend. How do you prepare for a team that is from another conference and another state? And how much do you know about them? That's the first time I heard that we're playing them. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like we haven't, uh, we haven't really talked about it too much. I'm sure that we'll, uh, we'll get the scout today or tomorrow or something like that. And then, and then go over that and practice. And, but we haven't actually spoke too much about it as of yet. But, yeah, things have been a bit unclear with how we get in there and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think that we'll just play each team as it, as it comes. Well, I'll give you a little blueprint. They have a, two head, us. They have a two-headed monster in Alex Darling and Jeremy Smith who you'll have to watch out for. But got to talk to you about yeah. the week of the finals format. It's exciting, the first national finals. We're going to get every team, every team winning uh, in the State Basketball Centre in Victoria. A little unique for a situation with your team because you've got two old heads, Greg Hire and Tom Jervis, who have been terrific. They continue to age like fine wine. But you've got to play two games in back-to-back -back days. How do the old fellas recover? Are they going to be all right for that second game? <laughs> yeah, I think they'll be fine. They'll be all right. They're professionals, so they'll, they'll find a way to do it. I'm sure they will. They always seem to find a way. So what are you looking forward to about this first national weekend? You said that you guys will be ready for it with no Devondrick Walker. We've been waiting for it for it feels like three to five years. It's finally here. It's going to be a unique experience. You must be ready to take on some new teams for once. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Just to see the talent over there and see how we, how we compare against that and stuff like that. Obviously, we've been trying to represent WA as a whole. But, yeah, like I think I'm pretty excited for, to see the, the level over there. So are we. And we can't wait to see you play in Melbourne. Yeah. It's going to be super exciting. Thank you for joining us on the show. We'll let you get back to your coaching. Safe trip over and good luck this weekend. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Well, Pete, I cannot wait to see Marshall Nelson and the Flames over here this weekend. Well, talking about chip on his shoulder, that's a, that's a guy who always plays <laughs> like that. But he's fun. He plays yeah. with swag. He spoke about the, some of the crazy shots he takes. No Devondrick Walker. I'm expecting him to have a pretty big weekend. Well, we're finally here. The national finals, we've talked about it forever. And it's finally this weekend. Get your tickets in ticks. If you can't make it to the State Basketball Centre, KO Freebies is where you'll be able to watch all of the games. Keep up to date on the app, of course, and we'll have everything going on the socials, but we need to get some tips before we sign off. So, Pete, who are you tipping as national champion? Oh, it's going to be tough because at full strength, it would have changed a lot of these a lot of these tips for me. And obviously with the GOAT, if she was to play the whole weekend, that would change things as well. The way it currently stands, is from what we know, I think the Ringwood Hawks on the women's side are going to be really, really tough to beat with Noah Lana Smith for Townsville. I think they might go close to getting the job done. So that'll be my tip for me. I know I said it earlier, the Frankston Blues, and they're going to be hard. I'm actually going to change it to the South Adelaide Panthers. I think oh, we, we spoke. We know if, if Devondrick Walker was here, I think the Flames go yeah. really well this weekend and prove really hard to beat. I think South Adelaide Panthers, Alex Starling and Jeremy Smith, well coached as well. I think the South Adelaide Panthers might get the chocolates mm. on the men's side. Yeah, the chocolates. We've got some chocolates. Got some too. chocolates thanks to Coles Express. Thanks to Coles Express. I am tipping the Townsville Flames in the women. I can't go past Shannon Seabom, Steph Reed and Courtney Woods and the Flames. In the men, I am going Victorian with the wildcard Frankston Blues. Well, speaking of tips, I'll also tip that the cherry ripe in these is just no good. No need <gasps> to no need to be done. Same with the Turkish Delight. So you can get but rid of those. How good is the Moro Bar? Very underrated. Very yeah. underrated. But that, we could do a whole show on that. We could. But we have had a whole season of shows. Today is our last. Thank you for joining us every week on KO, YouTube, Facebook, the NBL One app. A huge thank you to our team of MVPs off screen that put the show together from the NBL One, Lockie, Julia, Luke and Guy and the team. And then our uh, MVPs here at SEN in the studio every week, Paris, Darcy, Josh, Dave and the team, uh, we, we couldn't do it without them every week. So thank you for all your efforts. Um, and thank you to all the players that have joined us um, around the country every week. We've had unbelievable access to the best in the country. Well, yeah, cut, copy, paste all those thank yous, really. <laughs> I mean, it's been it's, it's always fun to come and do this. Really do appreciate the players. A lot of the timing doesn't always suit when they have day jobs or they're training. Yep. So I appreciate them giving up their time. And I also appreciate, as you mentioned, the, the, the guys out the back here that make the job work. There's no earpiece for me for the last show of the year. Why would we change what hasn't worked all season for me? But that's on me. I never wanted one, but I'm very thankful. It's been a lot of fun and I uh, look forward to doing it all again. Yeah, and thanks to Cole.
Coles Express as well for sponsoring the show. We love them and their support. Enjoy a massive weekend of national finals. Good luck to all of the teams playing for the title at the State Basketball Centre. It's one on one shot, not a future.